Hey everybody, welcome back. So we uh, put it in chat. We are a hundred percent gonna do a live versus Sue. Uh, Sue needs a moment here. I think he's just going to the bathroom or something. That's totally cool. It's totally fine. I think this is gonna be an absolutely great matchup though. And uh, I mean, I I have got a big big personal fan favoritism of Sue. We got to watch him beat the world champion, the BlizzCon champion himself. He beat Beyun in the Alima League Year Finals, which we had the pleasure of casting live in Korea from Busan. And uh, he put on such a great show. It was kind of funny, and I have some stories about Sue to tell, but Alive has kind of been our online champion in a bit of a way. Like, he has been regularly playing in every European, every Korean, and every tournament available. So, uh, let me just tell him. Uh, what can I tap in? There we go. Um, just playing in everything you possibly play in. So, I, I mean, a little bit of me wants to cheer for Alive here, but I think Sue, for me, is the player that I really want to see succeed. I want to see him keep that prowess of, like, Korean Terran killer type thing. Yeah, it should be a cool match. Last time these guys played, Alive actually won that match. So um, I think that was just like in an online cup. So not a huge deal, but you know, it's it's something to note as we go into the first game on Vani Research Station here. Yeah, spawning down here to the south. Brand new best of three in the round of eight. We do have the Red Terran player, Alive. And in the northern position, the Blue Zerg, known as Sue. And there we go. Crazy man. I guess uh, I haven't watched the clip. I'm going to trust you as I blindly retweet the uh, clip from that last game. The secret missile hit was just so good. So gross. I don't think Alive's going to be playing mech the same way we saw Ryung do, by the way. Like, I, I really want to see it. I'm a big mech fan myself because I'm a disgusting human being. But Alive has been sticking to a lot of bio versus Zerg. So... I'm going to jinx that now by saying maybe we'll finally get to see the Baneling dynamic. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. We all know at this stage that Banelings are just not a thing right now. <laughs> Every time we bring it up, right? Like, it's just like, yeah. left turn into mech territory, so no Banelings is going to get made. Who needs Banelings when you got roaches anyway? Like, come on, man. Banelings are so 2015. Well, regardless of what, because like, th that's the thing, right? Like, this is not really a game that I think is going to be dictated by Sue in terms of like what's going on. It's going to be Alive, who's most likely steering the direction of this ship. But regardless of that for the moment, um, going back to Sue, what was really interesting was while we were at the G-Star Arena in Busan, you had all the players kind of come in. And you had Bion and Gumiho and Ryong all like huddled up in a corner just kind of chilling. And then there's poor Sue sitting off on his own at a table, like literally alone. And I'm like, aww. He's either, like, plotting how to kill all of them or really lonely. <laughs> so I went over to talk to him, and his English wasn't so good, but uh, we did have a very basic conversation where I wished him good luck and I hope to see him do well. And it was really cool seeing him come out over Beyond because all of us went to those finals just assuming Beyond was going to win that. But uh, Sue won. It was, like, 3-1 on top of that. It is, by the way, becoming one of our most viewed VODs on YouTube, so hype over there, too. But nice. Yeah, I, I, I expect Sue to do well enough here. But, yeah, I guess the last couple of times we've seen him in online cups, I don't remember the game. I guess we may not have cast him versus Alive, but he's not had the greatest online presence. He's been streaming a hell of a lot, though, so props to him on that. Yeah, um, uh, this could be a sort of interesting clash of styles here, just purely because Alive has been playing against a lot of European uh, oh. players lately, a lot of European oh, Zergs. This... And they so, have a completely different play style to the usual Korean sort of stuff, so it's inter I'll be interested to see how he approaches this game. There's a there's a there's something going on here. I'm not sure what, but alive. First off, he didn't scout the third, which was to be the biggest tell that this wasn't happening. But he thinks there's a bus coming. You know, he's trying to rush out getting tanks for those ravagers. Maybe I mean the, the bunker coming down is already weird enough to see, but. I'm wondering what happened last time between these two that he's already thrown a bunker down this early so blindly. That Reaper yeah. could have scouted the third. It could have scouted the natural. There's nothing here he saw initially that said he should be worried about an attack. See, so yeah, salvage no, the I'm... bunker. Yeah, that's that's interesting. I, I guess he sort of realized and went, oh, silly me. Let me just go up to my starport now and get my sim. Because he wasn't holding lava. There were no lings. Uh, past the default amount for dealing with a Reaper, that kind of thing. It does strike me a as a little odd, but that's why Sue just going three base, droning up real hard, alive, 
checks outside his main, sees nothing of note, heads back inside and goes back about his day. So yeah, a bit of an interesting uh, decision there early on. Yeah, I I mean, I feel like that's got to be an influence on a previous game or something. Because there, yeah. that was just some weird paranoia. Like, don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of people who play safe. Like, I never liked the YOLO Marine King style of playing Terran, but that was kind of I like... Do. You had the possible tech lab swap for the fast tanks. You had the bunker going down. Like, what, what, what? <laughs> Preparing for all possible outcomes, Rifkin. Better to be safe than sorry, right? <laughs> uh, so, by the way, on that, that Marine King comment, too. Like, that guy was fun to watch. Don't get me wrong. But seriously, like, 8 out of 10 games, you'd, like, facepalm and be like, why did you lose like that, dude? Like <laughs> shameless Marine King fangirl. I had a lot of trouble letting go. Uh, <laughs> I had a lot of trouble not calling him MKP. Like, when he left Prime, it's like, I don't know, just don't want to call him MKP <laughs> all the time. No, he's still MKP. Don't lie to me. Prime is still a team that yeah, okay, occasionally yeah. wins games. Yeah, it never match fixed. Totally understood. <laughs> um, thank you very much. The respect for Athene 2 for the $5 it says, hey, that's not Zombie Grub. Swift Rage. No, it's Zeph. She's awesome. Uh, these queens are pretty much already positioned, whether they meant yeah. to be or not, so not a lot of life can get done here. That's gonna fall back. Yeah, he like denies a creep tumor for a second, gets an overlord. an overlord. Yeah, not bad. Um, yeah, so that's that's something. It's better than nothing, but you know what? He didn't lose anything for that. He's just sort of nudges in there. And as the Zerg, like he did have to make a few links to make sure that he can handle that and stuff, so you, you sort of indirectly get a little bit of almost damage that way. But he's pretty comfortable in his drone count. Anyway, he's continuing to make a few links. 1-1, one, one, uh, pretty far along at this point. And a Bane Link Nest Rifkin, oh my god! No, don't. No, he's going to cancel it now that you said it. I was purposely <laughs> not bringing it up. I was like, going to wait till after it's done to be like, oh my god, it actually finished. I I, uh, I don't know whether we'll get to see it or not. I'm hoping we will. I mean, there's no reason not to at this point. You've invested in this direction, the tech pad, you got melee upgrades, all that good stuff. I really want to see that plus 5, though, make a difference. Like... When it was plus 10 health, Terrans were still taking pretty fine fights. You're kiting down the middle of the map. You had maybe some lucky Widowmine hits. I think plus 5 health is still, uh, it's annoying, but it's not unmanageable by any means. Yeah. Well, we'll see how we go here. Here's the first four. Brain links start to morph in. Woo! Good hope. And he clears up some creep on the right hand side there does a lie which is a good move because you can't let that get out of hand it's gonna make pushing later on in the game absolute hell for you if you do not do that um would like to see him grab a third in just a moment in fact he's floating it over just now it's like he read my mind uh there is a ling blocking that momentarily there it does get cleaned up no bro out of sue though so he's not gonna be too annoying with it uh bangly speed is actually coming out and looks like it is in fact confirmed now we did it it took two tournaments worth of Koreans, we finally did it, like nine best of threes later, but plus five speed confirmed. We, of course, could have made a game at any point ourselves and tried to figure it out, but I think it was more fun doing it this way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. It gives a little suspense um, in the moments where no one's really attacking, not too much is going on. That said, though, Alive has got quite a few forces uh, moving around on the map still, quite a few medevacs in play, getting some Widow Mines positioned nicely for future attacks, and Sue is actually increasing the numbers of his ground army at the moment. He's got Banelings on the way, he's got um, more and more links coming out, going straight into the infestation pit here, as a drop actually goes off in the main from Alive. It's not a big drop, interestingly enough. Like, what am I paired up with some Marines? Looks like it's going to get baited out, so the what am I shot won't even be that deadly. But he will pick this up and hopefully fly out of there. A couple drones go down. Meanwhile, middle of the map, small engagement with the links gets cleaned up as Alive pushes towards a gold base that does not currently exist. That medevac? Mm -hmm. I know it actually means just escape. Okay. No, nah, he's just chilling, taking five. And does pick up these units, gets on out of there before he loses too much. He's constantly just trying to keep the creep controlled, which I really love from the live here. Yo, we saw Ryung on this map. He had a very interesting Great Wall of China thing going on. Alive <laughs> kind of has the Sim City going down too. Like, 
Really worried about these link attacks. Really worried about things slipping by. Dropping the natural does go off. What am I managed to burrow? A couple of drones die as you watch these run bys pile down the bottom of the map. I think Alive didn't see this though, even though he flew right over it. So as he moves on in, those links in the bottom left may turn into banlings, become really problematic. A lot of queens though have a lot of transfuses. I don't know how much staying power Alive really has. What am I gonna get a pop off? One of the queens goes down. No transfuses happening. What is Sue looking at? I guess over here on the right side. None of these queens should have died, in my opinion. Yeah, probably not. But, like, you, you do have a lot of things to pay attention to, I guess, so I can't fault him too much. And, oh. Oh. Okay, gets a nice little hit. drones. There. That's nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, not too bad. It's a lot for us. But while this goes on, just what we're talking about, too, like he snuck some banlings in. I'm just barely missing all the action. Fantastic. But rolls on and gets 13 SCVs with those banling hits. Now for yeah, alive, so you've got the, the niceness that is mules to bandage this, but damn, that's still a lot of workers dead. Yeah, you gotta be a little careful too. He's still sitting pretty on 60 SEVs, but a few more of those attacks and quite often a Terran or even a Zerg with mine hits, it's the same thing. You find that suddenly, ah, oh, I only have 40 workers and then you have 30 workers and suddenly it's late game and you really need that bang for an army. So you do have to keep an eye on that. Um, and I like that Sue employs those tactics. They're so dirty, but God, they pay off well. Oh man, Alive is just barely out of range of seeing this. Uh, the Marauder and the Marines may catch some of the Banelings as they roll by. We'll find out. But big attack on the left side going down the middle of the map. The Cleep Cleanup. The Cleep. Nope. Can't even English. The Creep Cleanup <laughs> Crew. There you go. See that five times fast. Uh, actually ends up distracting pretty well. But even though the Burrow goes down, oh, the no. shots aren't good. Picks up and loses several of his Marines. Oh man, that was a juicy hit from those bailings and some more units coming into that uh, natural base again, I think, but it uh, doesn't get too much. A lot of beat up SCVs there though, another couple of Bane hits and mmm. Yeah. Sue is going to have a nice time. Well, it looks like they will catch some of the bailings. That extra five health though. Oh, can he sneak on in? He's got to get that wall down first, which is a bit annoying, but really nice move by Alive, making sure that's staying repaired and whatnot, because that's going to save the lives of a lot of SCVs in the future. Yeah. While this goes on, though, Alive has not given up. He's been consistently applying pressure, so I really like that even though a lot of these attacks have been somewhat... Uh, oh, well, this one is actually not bad. Uh, as you see, yielding poor results. <laughs> <laughs> He's at least been keeping Sue very active at home and not letting him just turtle up or get away with macro. I mean, we've still gotten to the point, though, where it's hive tech. It's done. Ultralist Cavern's almost complete. 3-3's three finishing up shortly here for the Zerg. 3-3's three finishing up soon for Alive. Both players have made it to the late game with pretty nice trades. No one really, in my opinion, too far of the other, but that's still a lot of Zerglings, and that's not that many Banlings to go with them. Yeah, indeed. It's it's not a huge amount. It's about how you spread them anyway. Um, and he's pretty safe for the moment, I think, because he's going to be engaging on creep. He's slowly edged that forward to just encompass whatever base he's taking. So that makes it a little bit easier to hit your targets. But oh, I, I think was... he's probably just no, a whole bunch more time. Cops, no, Sue, don't why? waste those. Even if you want to free up supply, which he doesn't need to do just yet, I feel like you yeah. could have still traded those better. Maybe a small mistake, but uh, I guess a couple more units to die. These widow mines keep popping all all over the map. I mean, the early investment in drilling claws has certainly paid off because it's the difference of alive getting some kills versus no kills. Uh, getting closer and closer to creep, though, gets scarier and scarier for engagements. It's really tough to fight against the speed of these banlings. They roll in, but the Marauders took some pretty nice hits. This fight goes in the favor of alive, but still, a hundred more supply to chew through before he's won this game. Oh, beautiful timing here from alive as he jumps in. Right as Sue is trying to get some ultras. He is very bad at a boost here, though he has to kite back, target down those banelings. It is not an easy job, and he does take a few hits on the front lines, but he's milking a lot out of these oh. marines and marauders, even when they're very hurt. He's doing a fantastic job. There's and no kite displaying. He's suddenly in tatters. Yeah, there's no kite displaying, so these ultras are actually getting kind of super wrecked as they get kited around. Just the stutter step of the army seems to be more than enough for the time being. Now reinforcements have finally arrived, a couple more widow mines, and all the ones from the previous fight are reloaded, so he's able to go with another round of a lot of widow mines. Yeah, ooh, ooh. Although <laughs> widow mines are kind of being scumbags, if we're gonna be honest right now. <laughs> a lot of splash damage going off there, that's for sure. But I like how Alive is keeping up the pressure. He knows he's found the right window to attack in. And now all he has to do is not let up, not miss control. And he's going to be looking so good here. Look how 
beaten up that uh, ultra on the front line is there. Nice start of step from alive. Yes, one corruptor could be absolutely devastating if it would just shoot the medevacs, but it's always slightly out of range. Liberate is finally going to set up and help drive Sue back just a little bit, but the army supplies between both remains fairly consistent while Alive managed to bleed out a couple of SCVs behind this. I'm not sure where. I guess I hit towards the planetary, but uh, he's still sitting on like 50. I think that's okay. No, it was a drop, excuse me, in the natural base. That drop overlord managed to come on in. So several workers going down over here. We did have a small attack up here at the top right. Gold base getting stuttered around by these marines. Finds a nice spot in that mineral line, but he's going to eventually have to clean up. Yeah, pick up and get out of there. Yeah, I mean, I'm super greedy. I would love to see some multi-prong drops get going. It's not really going to happen right now because he's starting to produce liberators instead. But it's that sort of point in the game where the Terran can really turn it up to 11 and make it as difficult as possible for the Zerg to get that chunky Ultra, Ling, Bane, maybe a few Infestors, a few more Corruptors type army that they're looking for. Because so far, Sue is still looking real good. Let's not forget, he has an 80 drone economy. He has the tech that he wants. He's getting more upgrades. His creep spread looks healthy. So while he did take a bit of a blow early on in that last engagement, he's still looking real good. Yeah. The uh, air upgrades are really interesting to see, by the way, considering the investment here has been mostly corruptors this game. If this is mutas or something, you consider them dancing around picking up units? Okay, sure, but uh, not not carapace. Normally we see carapace because uh, you know, corruptors are already very armored units. The carapace upgrades let them take hits from marines and especially the liberators. It's just really weird to see the uh, weapon upgrade be prioritized at a Sioux. Mm -hmm. But, uh, setting some leaf frogs down in some zoning positions. He wants to hit those ultras. Widowmine's getting okay hits. Lots of marauders. Lots of marines still alive to kite these ultras down. And of course, even with kite plating, ultras are not as strong as they used to be. But Sue, I think, has overlooked having kite plating this game. For the amount of ultras he's invested into, he should have had kite plating a long time ago. I think this was yeah. a big mistake, Seth. Oh my gosh, this hurts my heart. These ultras, they didn't stand a chance. They're just doing the best they can, Rifkin. And it's not enough at the moment for losing to Marines. I mean, he does pick up, move those units out of there for the moment, but... I mean, look at this, Marines... This is gross! Yeah, Marines should never be able to hit Ultras like this. This is a big mistake out of suit. This is like watching Protoss players forget extended Thermal Lance, right? Like, these are engagements that should go so much better for Sue, or last so much longer for Sue, but he's constantly driven back, and those Ultras, he's still making them. I don't think he knows he doesn't have Kitness Plating. No, oh god, he would be looking fantastic right now. Think of how much better all of these engagements would have gone if he had that upgrade. God damn it, Sue, I'm sending you mind vibes. <laughs> you need to get that upgrade out of me. Sue, you're better than this, man. <laughs> I mean, I thought at first he wasn't going to invest too heavy in the Ultras. It would seriously be like two or four. Then you can kind of get away with no kindness plating if you want to. But the fact that he's consistently made more, he's lost five over the course of this game. Uh, there's there's more tension in the air upgrades than there are in the ultralisk upgrades, frankly. Yeah, I mean, Sue is doing brilliantly without even having that upgrade because uh, Alive is still continuously getting pushed back into Terran territory, basically. He's forced back off the creep. He's always hovering around the edge, though, so he's keeping up the pressure, but he hasn't been gaining any ground recently um, other than taking out the army, so... Hold that thought as Zoo comes in for oh. a big surround. A lot of bailing to that mix, so he yeah, the, can get a chunk of that bio down. Look, a third of Alive's army just got like unhotkeyed or something. I don't know. He was stuttering with the rest and just kind of left some of it standing. But the focus fire there was phenomenal as he takes out the bailings. Of course, they can just kind of kite around these ultras. I'm not sure if Alive has realized that there's no kite display. Like, these guys might both be playing with the assumption that kite display is, in fact, done when it's not. Uh, the ultra will go down. The bailings will pop off. The SCVs won't be too bad. Bad. Corruptors might be what kills the planetary fortress, though, at the end of the day. It's hard to out-repair this damage, and he's not going to. Rip. <laughs> oh, geez. oh, my God. Sue won this game? I'm so mad about this right now. <laughs> like, congratulations, Sue. There's no balance, Wyan, but this is seriously like, dude, you forgot, like, the most crucial upgrade, and you still beat back mm. the Terran. Keep <laughs> like, the good. tears coming, Rifkin. I'll drink them. All those juicy Terran tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, <laughs> next map is going to... Yeah, they're just streaming out of my face like a waterfall. Next map is going to be a lives choice, so maybe that'll give him a small advantage. He's a pretty good player. We'll see if he can bring this back. Uh, again, just kind of talking about the fundraiser now that we have a lot more people on the stream, though. I do want to talk about this, of course. Uh, the exclamation mark mega command takes you to the Macharino page. We've got things written out in fairly 
fairly good detail there. We've outlined a lot of our milestones we want to hit. There's a video you can play as well, but the TLDR of the TLDR video is that we have already put money into a team house in Korea. We already have people like Scarlet locked in to play there for the year, and uh, we've got some Koreans who we're talking to as well, and some foreigners who will be coming and going since they can't afford to stay permanently for a full year but with the fundraiser we want to do two things with it uh one is make the lives of those living in the house a little bit easier oh already um for example one of the early goals or one of the milestones is like cutting the rent down for the players so we'll put a portion of the proceeds towards just straight up paying off the rent so people staying in the house don't have to pay as much the other part of it too is just raising money for a really big awesome tournament at the end of 2017 so i hope you guys will check it out even if you don't actually want to donate any money if you don't want to actually contribute anything monetarily i hope you at least check it out so you can cheer for us and as we get uh, the plans going for this really big awesome tournament but as stated in the video as written on the kickstarter if you guys don't feel comfortable logging into matcherino if you don't want to figure out account stuff you can donate to the twitch channel because all of the stream tip stuff is going directly to that fundraiser and uh, I'm very glad to say, actually, let me refresh this. We've we've got what five hundred and ninety-one dollars raised on Match Arena already. We got another two hundred and thirty-five through stream tips. So again, we're on a great start, but it's a long journey, and we got a while to go. Game number two kicks off for still making Korea great. In the top left <laughs> side, we've got the Red Terran player alive. And in the bottom right, he is blue, and his name is Sue. I really had intended but forgot because we got going so quick. Uh, I wanted to ask too if you realized like he forgot kindness plating. That was such a big like, what what's going on thing, and obviously chat's trying to call me out on it. But I really want to emphasize there's no balance complaints. That wasn't like oh ultras are a great unit I don't need the upgrade. Like nothing along those lines. It was just straight up objectively <laughs> astonishing watching such a big upgrade be missing and still having Sue power through. It doesn't happen often, but once in a while you'll see those kind of games. And it's really awesome if you're a Zerg fan. Don't get me wrong, but you're kind of like, where did Alive go wrong? Because it looked like that game should have gone his way. Yeah. Yeah, look, Sue just played fantastically regardless. I think Alive wasn't able to actually ever get anything done. Um, there were a couple of drops that may have mowed down some drones here and there, but he didn't really pack any serious punches. He was always either even or slightly behind uh, Sue, so uh, he's going to have to step up his game a little bit here. I mean, Alive just had that much trouble without a crucial upgrade, so if Sue fixes that up in this game, we go late game again. I don't like his chances, but well, that's not to discount Alive. Like he's, He can certainly uh, take the game here and move into a third match but um i don't know i, I got a favor sue here i love by those coming in chat saying uh they love zeph's sass yeah zombie group gives sass? me grief oh. zeph gives me sass i like it <laughs> um actually there's one thing about the ultras to talk about too before we get too far in the game because i forgot about this until watching chat kind of balance wine themselves the ultras were changed a little bit they have higher base armor but get less from kindness plating so it would make sense that even without the kindness plating upgrade ultras aren't super bad i mean the, the extra one armor goes a long way but it's still uh kindness plating is what makes them the nearly unkillable beasts that they are yes indeed um yeah still not too much going on here in the early stage, the Ling's just scouting around a little bit. Reaper well, is out, ready to rock and roll and have a look around. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to see how Alive opens this game. Is he going to try and go for another drop? Is he going to stick with his Hellion play? You know, that kind of thing. Um, well, he needs... I feel like you want to do something to Sue early on. You can't just let him go like that. Well, actually, I had forgotten about this because of how tied up in the late game we got. But if you recall, Live's early game was really weird. His scouting wasn't great. His yeah. Reaper died without getting much done. And of course, he played really scared with like you know, bunkers hiding and things. Uh, I think you had mentioned though, last time they played each other, it was Sue who lost. So it's kind of nice to see mm -hmm. him, him get a lead at the start of this. But this series is you know, far from over just yet. Yeah, we'll see how we go. Uh, if Alive can come up with something a little better. And the last game, I just don't feel like he brought his A game. That's as simple as it is. And hold that thought, as Sue, he has been making links, and he's come for a bit of a visit over here. This is not oh, a the game deep was down. Oh news, no! But my goodness, he is chewing up all the marines. He's gonna get some SCVs now get a as Reaper well. Too. 
I mean, the, the, that wall should not have been down in the first place. This, as you said, this won't be game ending, but this was like really unnecessary damage. Fick <laughs> one link, one HP. What's up, buddy? I mean, SCV's coming for game you. game ending, it's also really, really unhelpful for him to it's... be winning this game in the future. He's now 10 workers down over his opponent. Uh, as Suki keeps on powering, he's got his third base up, and there's been absolutely no uh, contest on that part either. And that makes it harder to continue to defend this natural. I mean, look how many units he has. Hmm, like five marines. If Sue wanted to keep going with that, he could have actually done more damage. But uh, Sue is playing it safe. He's going back to droning queens, overlords, that kind of thing. I wonder um, if, like, <laughs> alive, how easily do you tilt? That's a big question right now. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. Fair point. But uh, someone in chat bringing up one of our rewards on the fundraiser. Uh huh. Three thousand dollars to Scarlet host a cooking stream. I'm not kidding, guys. We talked to her about this. She she really <laughs> wants to do a cooking stream for you all. But the big one, in my opinion, and we weren't sure if we were actually going to do this because we had to ask permission to Neeb. But uh, Neeb left his Kespa cup in Korea when he went back home to America, and he said, "Yeah, you guys can totally have like a ramen eating session out of the Kespa cup." So that's one of the tire rewards to. Uh, I guess in a small way defile the trophy, but I mean it was like the last Kespa is that, Cup. Is that hygienic <laughs> to eat out of? So the they're gonna they're trophy. gonna clean it. They're gonna clean it. I mean. Well, yeah, but <laughs> that's it's still gonna... not really something you eat out of, like. I mean, a bowl's a bowl at the end of the day, right? Like, <laughs> it's a really big shiny bowl that had uh, used to have some notability to it. Soon to have some notoriety. I don't know. They, they... Oh, we do. We do. <laughs> It's going to be great. I hope we reach that goal at the very least. Even if we don't fulfill the campaign, I hope that's the one we meet at the very minimum. Mm -hmm. But uh, double medevac unload over here. We do have the Viking just hunting off to the side, picking up overlords. Uh, medevac's just kind of distracting at best right now. It's hard for the Viking to get those kills, those speed overlords. So it's going to die. Feels bad, man. But two overlords dead before going down. Yeah. And again, these, these, this first double drop isn't able to do anything. Sue sees it, and now he's just going to follow it around with his Ling Longs and be like, mm mm, you're not going to drop anywhere. Um, oh the God. best he can do is is get like a couple of creep tumors, and this is what happened in the last it's... game. The most he was able to do was deny a bit of creep. So that was like a real big trip down memory road for me just now. I totally forgot you said Ling Longs. It's been like three <laughs> years since I've heard that in the cast, but. Yeah, Ling Longs. Ling Longs and the Billabong, right? They play their didgeridoos and <laughs> okay. eat bananas. I'm, right, trying, to, I'm trying to go around this shit. <laughs> Not really ahead, but you know. Let's quit while you're dug deep in that <laughs> hole. You don't need to go any further down. Uh, okay, so Sue's going to replace a lot of these creep tumors. Nicely done, too, before the creep's fully receded, so this won't be too bad to get back out. Uh, for Alive, he wants to clean up more tumors. It's, it's unfortunate because that scan range was literally like on the edge of those tumors. It couldn't get more unlucky than that. But he can't stay here for much longer. And it's so many lings. It's so many queens. If he stays, he dies. Yeah. Back at home, though, he's been gearing up for what looks to be a pretty big two base all in. No third command center in sight. And a lot of tanks already haven't been made. Yeah. I, I do like that he's continuing to be a pain in the ass here, though, because... You want this high ground when he actually wants to move out and do a push. He doesn't want creep up here. That, are you kidding? That will make it totally pointless to siege up on top of that ramp because who will have vision. And he's actually coming out right now with those tanks, with the marauders, a bit of extra beef in that army. Gotta be careful as these links come out. And if they join up with the rest of the army, Sue will be pleasantly surprised by a Terran army it visit. It is worth noting, by the way, tanks will not one-shot Lings with the current upgrades. Uh, unless that tank gets a 1 plus damage upgrade, Lings will be able to weather the, the hit. But still, that splash damage is going to be nice. It'll help them take it down a little bit better. Slow Banlings rolling to the tanks. They're going to get exploded on. Marines running for their lives. It's okay if the tanks die if they take out all the Banlings in the process, but they don't. Several Banlings still live. Speed still so far out. And looks like Alive might just have time on his side. Seriously, 10 seconds to go until Sue's got that speed. Yeah, he is looking a lot better this time. He's actually gaining some ground here. That said, though, he's getting pushed he back. Nice a lot, though. From the queens on those medevacs, and he's forced right back into a corner. He has to oh, no, oh, no! <gasps> GG. Oh, no. So the question was, 
like how easily does a live tilt and the answer is apparently fairly but uh yeah that wasn't all in like that wasn't like oh my god he rage quit because the medevac died that was an all in that failed so it makes sense that he taps out and sue will advance on to the semifinals, which are the qualifying games for this series or for this tournament excuse me yeah a little upset that wasn't such a short game there um but i mean two base all in if you can't beat him in a long game i, I guess that was a, a good choice anyway it looked promising for a moment but a bit unfortunately uh, unfortunate to see alive actually bow out there but sue we'll move on do we know what who his opponent's gonna be yet either bunny or uh breaking gg who beats scarlet by the way 2-1 oh okay i've uh, never seen him or her play cool uh, bottom side, we got Zest versus Gumiho. That's the series we had wanted to cast, but we jumped up here because we wanted to see some Sue action. Trust plays off against Ryong. The plan from this point going forward, guys, is to cast both of the semifinals and the grand finals, so three best of threes remain in the tournament. Uh, hopefully, you guys are going to enjoy all of them because they are pretty fantastic games. Uh, big thank yous go to Mesa, and he just contributed $100 to the fundraiser. What an awesome guy. So uh, thank you very much, Mesa. Uh, other than that... I guess, uh, again, check out the, the, the giveaway links, exclamation mark giveaway in chat, uh, exclamation mark mega will bring you to the, um, the the fundraiser page. But also, and we mentioned this briefly earlier, I'll bring it up again, we have a survey going out from a sponsor. Uh, it's a company looking to test the waters with getting into esports. They're looking for genuine opinions, so that they're trying to be somewhat anonymous. If you live in the United States, you have a chance to win some debit cards. There's more information down below in the stream information, so scroll down if you want to read more on winning. But it is sadly restricted to U.S. only in terms of prizing. However, anyone in the world can take this survey, and if we get enough surveys filled out, they're going to pay us, I think, up to $500, which we'll be putting towards, again, fundraiser and other cool events. So... Consider checking that out if you guys don't have money to pay, but you still want to support some way, somehow. Um, outside of that, we're just probably going to go to commercial break and have to wait a few minutes for one of these other matches to finish up. So stick around, folks, and we'll see you soon.